When the CIA was created in 1947, it only had one purpose, destroy communism. But under the leadership of Director Alan Dulles, the agency morphed into a league of assassins. It was the violent vanguard for American corporate power. And soon, coups and disinformation campaigns were used internally here inside the U.S. Just ask Chuck Schumer. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. The media works in tandem with the intelligence agents, often unwittingly, but sometimes not. When Langley wants a narrative to ripple through the public realm, they package leaks to reporters who turn them into scoops. The tactic goes back to the 70s. Disseminate propaganda to influence people's minds, and this is a major function of the CIA. You have contact with a journalist, you will give him true stories, you'll get information from him, you'll also give him false stories. You also work on their human vulnerabilities to recruit them in a classic sense, to make them your agent so that you can control what they do. 400 journalists cooperating with the CIA, uh, including some of the biggest names in the business, to consciously introduce the stories into the press. Most of the time, journalists don't realize they're being used. Only the true wise men of Washington really understand that they're just message carriers. One of the last remaining wise men of Washington is a Washington Post journalist named David Ignatius. This is the guy who got the Mike Flynn leak, which triggered his resignation, and dominoed into Trump firing Comey, which sparked a special counsel investigation. Ignatius's columns are often what the FBI or what the CIA wants you to believe, whether it's true or not. Ignatius called Chris Steele a truth teller. His columns were the pillars propping up the collusion hoax. Ignatius is the columnist who deemed the laptop Russia disinformation. You see where I'm going here? When American intelligence, the FBI or the CIA, wants to put out a hit, they feed it to little David. Tan, tortoise shell glasses, aristocratic hair, and he delivers the hit with the perfect old school beltway air of sophistication. And last night, his most explosive column of the Biden presidency dropped in the Washington Post and sent D.C. into a frenzy. Brett Baer's Windsor knot almost unraveled. The headline, President Biden should not run again in 2024. Ignatius is no centrist. Ignatius is a Democrat with a simmering loathing of Trump. Quote, I don't think Biden and Vice President Harris should run for re-election. It's painful to say that given my admiration for much of what they've accomplished. But if he and Harris campaign together in 24, I think Biden risks undoing his greatest achievement, which was stopping Trump. So obviously, Ignatius, this morning appears on the one cable news show the president watches every day, Morning Joe. And he locked eyes with the president and pulled the pin. I haven't gone anywhere in the country. I haven't talked to any group of people uh, th where this issue of whether President uh, Biden should run again hasn't been a, a centerpiece of conversation. It, do it doesn't get into the, the newspapers. It doesn't, doesn't get much on TV except Fox News, which is obsessed with it. And I thought that it was time to, to, to raise that question. Uh, and the, again, the heart of it is uh, whether uh, Joe Biden is the best person to carry this legacy forward. Ignatius, the dinner party gatekeeper and CIA butler, is turning Washington's whispers into a rallying cry. The message is clear. It is now officially acceptable for the Democrat media establishment to respectfully urge President Biden to gracefully announce he won't be seeking a second term. He's done his job. He beat Trump, invested in America, so why don't they want him to run again? Here's why. Biden's staring down the barrel of impeachment. The American intelligence community has to tie up loose ends, just like they did with the Mueller investigation, Durham investigation, and the lab leak bribes. Urging Biden to step aside is just another cover-up. An impeachment exposes the bureau and the agency. The American intelligence community was complicit in a decade of Biden family business. They have the Bidens on FISA surveillance, wiretaps, with Chinese agents. The Treasury has 150 suspicious activity reports. Hunter Biden was used as flypaper overseas. 
That's why everybody surrounding the Biden family is in prison or missing. And remember the second prong of the impeachment inquiry? House Republicans are looking at the cover-up. FBI agents tipping off the Bidens. The Justice Department deep-sixing the Ukrainian bribe allegations. Chinese counterespionage. And the IRS agents being obstructed. The full public airing in House committees on live TV with this mountain of evidence compromises the entire Washington establishment. Not just the feds, the press, too. And the entire Democrat Party, who's been recklessly denying and ignoring this scandal's growing threat for years. So this column is more than a suggestion. It's a marching order. And Joe and Mika, their heels are clackety-clack clacking against the marble. Watch. Mika and I, uh, everybody we talk to, every political discussion, all uh, it, it talks a, a lot about Trump. But when it comes to Joe Biden, people say, man, he's too old to run, isn't he? I mean, he's not going to he's not really going to run every discussion. When I say every discussion, I don't mean 99 percent of the discussions. Every discussion. We got it. I asked Reverend Al if he was hearing it all the time on our show this past week. He's hearing it as well. Democrats off the air will say Joe Biden's too old. Why is he running? On the air, they won't say that. Mm. Morning Joe just admitted the Democratic Party is a dishonest monolith. Everyone must say the same thing at all times, even when they don't believe it privately. The Democratic Party is literally a mob, but the mob can't function when it's fractured. So this fall, we'll see a transition from Joe's the next FDR to Thanks for playing. The media, which is about as obedient as a dog, suddenly sounded like Peter Ducey. The president has lied about being at ground zero the day after the September 11th attacks, falsely claimed he saw the Pittsburgh Bridge collapse, uh, claimed his grandfather died in the hospital days before his birth. What is going on with the president? Is he just believing things that didn't happen did happen, or is he just randomly making stuff up? The president uh, was deeply touched and honored to be able to spend 9-11 with uh, military members there in Alaska. And he spoke about uh, a visit to Ground Zero, which he did participate in, uh, about a week or so after uh, the, the event. But he's had a string of saying things that happened, didn't have things that are easily debunked. Why does he keep doing that? The president was grateful to spend that time with those family members and those troops. Oh, there's blood in the water. Over the last six weeks, Biden passed out on the beach, told Maui a kitchen fire almost killed his cat, announced it was bedtime in Vietnam, and commemorated 9-11 on an Alaskan airstrip by cracking jokes and lying about being at ground zero. Opening the impeachment inquiry was the final straw. The manager's pulling the pitcher. The White House counsel's office is now struggling on CNN. Why was the president at those meetings, on those uh, phone calls? I think this is part of the right wing's misinformation machine to try to confuse people uh, about what the truth is. The truth is that the president, as he has said publicly for years, uh, calls his family every day to check in. He calls his son every day to check in. He calls his other family members to check in to see how they're doing. He loves him. White House counsel's office is going to become a laughing stock if their defense during impeachment is Joe loves his son and he loves the weather. But here's the problem. Biden's stubborn. He may be the most stubborn politician in Washington. He might not go easily, which means he's going to need a nudge. So expect to see this fall season pockmarked with anti-Biden bombshells. So if Joe Biden does bow down, Kamala is the heir apparent. How does the intelligence community assess that scenario? My impression from talking to people in Washington and around the country is that she has not been successful uh, in the way that she would want in getting traction as 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 vice president. The, the key question with somebody who's as as old as vice president, as excuse me, President Biden will be, is is whether people see the vice president as as a strong successor. So far, I don't think she's made that case to the country. So this is a double murder. The whole ticket's being canceled. Newsom's the only shot, but he doesn't want to leapfrog a female minority. He'd rather not run into a burning house and keep his powder dry for 28. So this is where it gets tricky. The intel community is making a calculation. The Trump revenge tour, a second term, is preferable 
to not being able to clean up the compromising dirt that springs from an impeachment. The intelligence community is in a lose-lose situation, but wouldn't be the first time they pulled a rabbit out of their hat and won't be the last. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.